Dana, what's what? One day we're gonna do this, and I'm gonna be like, "Hello, Dana," and you're not gonna respond, and I'm gonna be like, "Dana," and you're gonna be like, <laughs> "There is no Dana, only Zool." That's right. It could happen any day now. It could have happened today. I had a heated debate with a gentleman over something stupid, and uh, <laughs> but I did fight Zool back, and then uh, and then I pulled my back out. So if you suddenly see me go, that means uh, my back spasmed. Oh, that's unpleasant. Well, it, 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 I would I would rather that than you be uh, attacked by a ghost. Uh, that could happen too because I just heard something out back there. <laughs> this is terrible. I don't like this one bit. You know, every time I'm with you, I forget they let you hear that recording. I don't know if I want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> with, with my luck, it'll be something different. It'll change, and I'll hear like my name, and I'm like, "Oh no!" And then it'll it'll just go from there. <laughs> that would be that would be cool, though. <laughs> no, no, it would not. So, loyal <laughs> listeners, so I've been spending more time down down here in the basement, you know, fixing things up and. <laughs> And that, and the, and I moved my workspace down here, and uh, so my action figures would just fall over, and I, you know, we joked that there was a ghost down here doing it, but I bought this little touch light, which is a globe, and you touch it, and it turns on, and then there were times when I'd be sitting down there alone and turn around, and the light was on, which terrible. was creepy, just, just so, terrible. <laughs> Which <laughs> it's just weird, right? <laughs> so then I'm sitting there and I'm working. It's the middle of the day. I'm the only one in the house, and action figures fall over, and I get I get upset, right? So I turn to whomever is could potentially be down there, and I said, "Look, stop knocking my stuff over. I gave you the light. Play with the light. Stop, stop knocking my stuff over." And then I said, "If you got something to say while I'm here working, I'm going to leave my phone right here for a minute." Recording. If you got something to say, like, you know, silly ghost shows, go ahead and say it. For a minute, it recorded. 26 seconds in when I heard it back, I swear, someone says my name. <laughs> and I told Tom about this. And Terrible. now he feels like any moment now, he's going to be killed by a poltergeist. I, I don't know if I spoke this into being. I don't know. If... I think you did. Because <laughs> this, is, this has been a... a legitimate fear of mine this is not a bit <laughs> i am it's not this is not a <laughs> bit we don't really write bits like, I don't know. <laughs> i'm genuinely terrified of being ghost murdered through no fault of my own that's the worst <laughs> part of it what's what you have to come over tom is come on over and we'll do a ouija board session <laughs> no <laughs> as for a why right so anyway what's Back to the normal instead of the paranormal or the abnormal. Uh, did you get anything new this week? I did. I actually picked something up from I, – I don't have mail mail to where I currently live. I have it mailed somewhere else. Uh, but I did pick it up today, but I actually didn't get a chance to open it yet. So we get a live – we're getting a live opening today because I don't know what's in here. Oh, it's, oh so this is it's, a, it's a mystery for all of us. It's a – I mean, you, you know, things are pretty okay and kind of better than you think they are when you order stuff and things arrive and you're like, I don't even remember ordering that. What did I get? That's great. <laughs> I feel like as a collector, that's that's what we want. Right. Because, you know, I, I tend to only order from a couple of places and they always go into my pile of loot, right? And then I selectively send whenever. So I rarely do I get a surprise. So this is cool. <laughs> I can't wait. See, I, I order from multiple places, right? Like I'm constantly poking around on on ebay or whatever random toy site and if i see something right. that happens or to be on on russian sale with brides, clearance, whatever. yeah i mean you know some, some look some russian brides sometimes have to sell their collections on the cheap so i'm <laughs> like i'll buy that for what what translates into 30 dollars and they're like but i'm trapped over here and i'm like yeah 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 send uh send your <laughs> your new eternia whiplash oh, yes. nice. not bad um oh, man he looks good I love that figure. He looks so good. I need multiples of this. I uh, yeah. Whiplash has always been one of my favorites. Not so much the character, but his mm -hmm. his look is awesome. Yeah, that his design semi -reptilian is semi reptilian dragon dude. I love it. Yeah, and I like that this. I, I I'm not familiar with his original design, but I kind of like that the that they they went so far as to try and give you a little bit of I guess what the original concept mm -hmm. was. Uh, yeah. So you can pull it. You can. You can pull the armor on and off. I think the helmet actually comes on and off. It does. 
because it fell <laughs> off in my Jeep because I was uh, excited to open them and it took me three days to find it. <laughs> Whenever, when, this is, see, this is like too bad. Whenever he goes on clearance, because I, I'm, I'm already starting to see Ram Man and Clawful and Whiplash, they're getting their restocks. Everyone who wanted them ran out and got them. Mm -hmm. uh, now they're starting to, we're starting to see the backlog. Uh, I wonder if they're going to hit clearance because if they do, I could do with a whole bunch of lizard men who I could put I, I, yeah. snake heads for and turn them into snake men. Right. But mind cats. if I do. Not scaly cats. <laughs> no, no scaly cats for him, but perhaps, perhaps Grizzlore. Because oh. I don't like the Grizzlore head. I, I don't, I never cared for the filmation version. He's a, no. he's a bear. Make him a bear man. Bear, the bear <laughs> necessities. So how about uh, you? What yeah, I'm found? trying, I'm trying to reach something without bending my back. So I bought this on clearance last week, finally. You need a little uh, grabber stick that has the dino head on it. I do. <laughs> Just as a curiosity, I saw this for 10 bucks, so I bought it. And it's the uh, the gelatinous oh, cube. <laughs> we've been talking about the gelatinous cube forever. It's larger than I thought it would be. Yeah, so what, it's big. Like, I can wear it around what, my head. What is it? What, it's like just, I, it's a box. It's okay, just so a, it's, a simple box. And it's got some things that come off, like this skeleton leg. Now, how are those attached? Are there are there indentations in it? Yeah, are there... and they've got little okay. pegs. Pegs, I don't know if you can see them. Okay, and so then, they're pre-made. there are holes in there, yeah. Oh, so they're pre-made indentations. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not foamy. Like, remember, we were like, is it like a yeah. memory foam? Which yeah, would have been cool. Because the size of the box versus what we know that it is <laughs> it's like well what's right. what's in and there then, what? then so the top comes off right okay and then inside there's a claw oh okay you that's can neat. see you can see it through mm -hmm. you could just put a dude in in this claw right that's, here that's that's kind of neat yeah 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 it's kind of neat who do i have laying here i'm sure i can grab somebody Ooh. yeah it's also it's also plunderling in there yeah i get a plunderling we'll put Maybe a battle toad We'll put a battle oh, that, toad. That'll in. work too. You can see him that'd better. Be, that'd be right up their alley. Yeah. They lost the battle against the gelatinous cube. <laughs> this was waiting them for them in the uh what is any one of the pits on that impossible uh speeder bike board that nobody can get through unless you cheat. Right. Uh he may be a little too buff. Oh, there we go. No one's too buff for the gelatinous cube. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, so there he is. <laughs> that is that's actually pretty great. If yeah. I come, at, see, they, they've they've only dipped down to about fifteen where I am. If I find one for ten bucks, that looks like it's worth getting. That's, That's pretty cool. cool. I, That's the first time I, I put somebody in it, but it looks it like looks it, like he's trapped in Jello. It really we should have put a we should have put a stapler in there. For the <laughs> it, it really does look like he's suspended in a in a see through cube. That's awesome. Yeah, I, it's well done for ten bucks. It's worth it. That's see. That's what it should have initially cost. I feel yeah, like people yeah, would have right. troop built gelatinous cubes. And if it's uh, what what uh, what company is that? Hasbro. Yes. Yes. Hasbro. How have you not made the gelatinous cube smooth and purple and released it as Energon cubes? Uh, what are you doing? Uh, right. Right. What, what, are, what you are you doing? not doing? Make the, just put it out as unrefined Energon. Be like sometimes it gets sloppy. We can we can get really uh, deep with it and put a Rubik's cube inside the gelatinous cube. And then we'll... In Inception gelatinous cubes. <laughs> right. I like get on it, Hasbro. You own all these properties. Oh my back. <laughs> Are you back? Are you Spider Man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my back. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Well, I don't. I don't mean to laugh at your pain. <laughs> my neck and my back. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. So. Now that we've gone through a lot of silliness and some cool things, there's it something just... I want to talk. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, were, were you going to add some more silliness? I it's just it's just going downhill from here. <laughs> All right. Well, let's try and go uphill, which would be a challenge for us, I think. Um, so today I want to talk about like um, when my younger bro my brothers and I were younger, mm -hmm. in between. Uh, different collections that we'd remember we had the basement right yeah. and we would we would construct that into a world but if we didn't feel like going down there mm -hmm. and playing eternia or gi joe or star wars or whatever we had constructed down there we would stay upstairs uh probably to my parents chagrin mm -hmm. and then <laughs> we would do uh 
we would have whatever toys we could find would turn into wrestlers. Yes, absolutely. So I wanted today to talk about <laughs> wrestling <laughs> toys and how oh. they inspired us to turn everybody and then for, for our inspiration. <laughs> Oh, uh, one of the people I despise the most. <laughs> I know you do. If I could find, if I had my Hulk Hogan, then I really, I know you hate him too. But this is, this is the recent, like I found him at uh, Walmart for seven bucks on clear. So I had to okay. pick him up and he's I like great. his, his pose. Like he's well done. I he's like great. Him. He's great custom fodder. I would absolutely get that and take his head right off. <laughs> Swap it out with someone oh, who's not. Of course, you would. This is why <laughs> you would never play with my toys. But check out his robe in the back. That is very well. Oh no, it's of the comic. This wow. is a comic. <laughs> it's a of that awful, awful warrior comic. Wow, that I, is. As soon as I <laughs> opened it, and I saw it, it was the comic book cover. I was like, "Oh, Tom's gonna that, love this." That is the perfect level of meta for that figure. Like, who who put that out there and was like, "Yeah, oh, we have to do that. We absolutely have." I, to I do like that. his his put the look <laughs> on his face. Mm. He's, he's trying to figure out what's over yonder. <laughs> <laughs> he's not sure if he approves, but right. he may just leave them alone. Be like, nah, don't work it out. So Whatever's I remember the, 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 the first wrestlers that we <laughs> we were thinking with the, with the big rubber LJN. Yes. So I remember wrestlers, those. Right? That was 84, 85, right? Yes. And, uh, you know, they were cool. Of course, the first one that came in the house was the Hulkster because my younger brother is a Hulkamaniac. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but we had no one anywhere that he could wrestle because that figure was so big, right? And it was a solid hunk of rubber. Yeah, they were, they like were a solid. Giant they, eraser. Were, mm -hmm. they were kind of heavy and they did, yeah, there was no, they were pre posed. So there was no right. real. You know, whatever it was they were doing, that's just what they were doing. If they were, if they were in like the the, the squatting, uh, two fists up, kind of like the knees right. That's what they pose, did with that's... all the big guys because they yeah. had to fit them in the package. They couldn't make them <laughs> like Big John Stud, Hulk yeah. Hogan, like Andre. They all had yeah, that kind of yeah. They were all like in mid lift of a of a uh, a set of weights, right? And so we had no one for him to wrestle. Mm -hmm. So we had this weird little uh, like air hockey table for kids. So it was mm -hmm. maybe four feet long and maybe two, two and a half feet wide. And that was our ring. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only thing that was comparable was we had, um, I believe it was called like Rage in a Cage Incredible Hulk. Okay. And it was this cage that we, you would snap together with the Hulk oh, inside. That's right. And then it had a little like aquarium like mm -hmm. tube and a hand pump yeah. and you pump him up and he would bust out of the cage. <laughs> but just like the Hulkster, aside from that inflatability, mm -hmm. this was his pose. Yeah. So the story was that Hulk Hogan uh, made Hulk angry and, and <laughs> because he stole his name. Hulk so, mad over copyrights. <laughs> yes. So Hulk and Hulk Hogan would wrestle in this air hockey <laughs> ring mm -hmm. and that that was the beginning of the wrestling and then after that um you know anything was wrestling. so we had uh you know from when we were younger like plush dolls mm -hmm. and we had cabbage patch kids right and we had now, did, did you have the, the the plush wrestling buddies no 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 we okay. didn't have those but we had these plush dolls and then mm -hmm. i had uh ronald mcdonald and burger king which i still have they're they're out there <laughs> That's and and they would we would make wrestlers out of them and mm -hmm. make stories. And of course, Burger King and Ronald McDonald were fighting for the burger crown, you know? And mm -hmm. it was great because Burger King had this like solid head with a crown on it. And uh -huh. if you threw him, he was like a rocket. <laughs> and that was his finishing move. He was never... You threw him like a dart and he would whoosh like a rocket. But like anything became, became wrestlers. And yeah, then... I... Then we got more wrestlers, and we just kept adding. What was uh, so you were a big wrestling fan? Who were your yeah, first so wrestlers? When I was younger, we would. Uh, I, it's interesting. That, it's always interesting for me to hear uh, how other people incorporated wrestling into their into their play. Because usually you had like the army or like the war kind of play uh, or wrestling. Because a lot of a lot of kids, especially a lot of boys, would watch wrestling either with their with their with their parents or with their siblings and i watched wrestling with my dad and i was i was super into it uh funny enough 
I was never interested in having any of the wrestling action figures. I was really? more, yeah, I was more into, like, I, I just thought that, like, even though I liked wrestling and I was like, this is great for what humans do, but I was more interested in seeing, like, dinosaurs do it or, or like, right. He-Man characters cool would that be? wrestling dinosaurs. Like, I always wanted that, like, the big, like, the bigger than life and the, the characters I've always fascinated me the most were the ones that were kind of like the larger than the life the ones that aired on i was the complete target audience when vince went a little cartoony he got out of hand with it but right you yeah. had characters like like jake the snake who i like I how you talk about vince mcmahon like you guys are buddies yeah you yeah. remember when vince got a little wacky at oh, that party oh yeah we all... made the brooklyn brawler <laughs> yeah that... yeah we all we all i think that's how we all talk about Vince and, and I like that everyone kind of when when I say Vince, everyone knows who I mean. <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, whether it be oh yeah Vince or oh yeah Vince, right. <laughs> depending on what he was doing. But I was, I liked wrestling. I did not care for or ask for or it, it was not interested in wrestling figures. Uh, mm. And every time I thought about, I, I actually used to think about this. I wonder how come I didn't want didn't want these things why didn't, why did i not want them when all i do all i did was make them wrestle ninja turtles wrestled uh sectors like the whole right. night we, we had sectors in there yeah everyone had belts i used to make belts out of aluminum foil i know we, we've, mm. we've talked about this before but everyone that i owned had had like a division that they were in they were either in like they were in like a tag team and right. there was there was a, a set did you pretend to be belts did you pretend to be the commentators? My brother and I, while we were wrestling, were the yes, commentators. Like we would take absolutely. turns doing a match. Every once in a while, there'd be like a main event. So like, uh, you know, one of us would have the heavyweight champion and the other would have the intercontinental champion. Then mm -hmm. you have the tag team champions and the six man tag because, yeah. you know, the, the LJN guys were, were big, but mm -hmm. then Remco, who already had the buck, Right. They yeah. had uh, those cool like the warlord figures and those yeah. weird dinosaur figures with the heads. Mm -hmm. But that 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 main buck mm -hmm. then became the AWA wrestlers. Remco yeah. put out and it was the same time right around 85. And mm -hmm. they had a whole bunch of figures that I I didn't know those guys. Now, again, yeah. Derek, my older brother who was always to the left, like we were in the <laughs> WWF. Right. And he was like mm -hmm. us, you know, there. AWA <laughs> is real wrestling because they weren't quite mm -hmm. as cartoony, right? And they had yeah. Ric Flair, Larry yeah. Zabisco, Mike Rotundo. Mm -hmm. I think Snooka was actually over there at that time, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, he knew the Long Riders and, of course, the Road Warriors. Everybody knew the Road Warriors, right? Yeah. But um, those figures came into play. And because they were that Remco buck that was originally a He-Man ripoff, right? Mm -hmm. We already had figures that were compatible. So yeah. He-Man then became, became wrestlers. And then there was those, <laughs> there were those knockoffs. There was, you know, mm -hmm. they were a little smaller, but like, yeah. I think they were called wrestling championship figures. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they had the, um, the guy with the blue face, the green face. What was the real guy's name? He was in one of the other leagues, but he had a, like a green face. And he was, was like Muda? the George. I, I was that, was I that the great Muda? No, it was it was maybe earlier than that, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. It'll come to me. But um, like he had a big egg head with a blue face and mm -hmm. um, like those knockoff figures. And then they had those like galaxy warriors that they then remarketed. I remember galaxy as warriors. Wrestlers, right? <laughs> they, re they remarketed those <laughs> as wrestlers. And 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 it was all cool, like and so anybody we found that was that size because there was like uh, a line of so close to that time, the Chuck Norris figures came out, mm -hmm. so we used those as managers and wrestlers as well. Yeah. And then a line of like those cheap ninja toys that I, I think were also Remco. Yeah, um, we used those who, as wrestlers. Everybody made, was a wrestler. Who made the uh, the early Rambo figures? Because I I, I want to say, was it it was either Remco or Galoob? Maybe. Okay, because I remember they were they were a little bigger. They were bigger than He Man yeah, figures. Yeah, they were about and he they were like the, sector size. Yeah, and he had he had the pre posed arms. And you know, I it was very very much very similar to the sector. But you're right because I remember yeah. him being able to do like a split kick. And I was really impressed. Right. And, that was, and you could and balance became, him. You could balance yeah, him on one foot. That yeah. became his finish. I, I used him for wrestling. So that, he, yeah, that became 
that became his fit. Like he Oh, and the Rocky Ram- figures? Clubber Lang and those- I actually never had I never had any of the Rocky figures. But they were I, perfect too. Yeah. He was it was it was kind and of And like the, the funny the, thing is they made Thunderlips. Did they? Which was Hogan. You know, wow. so and there was no no fight over the copyright, huh? I guess not. <laughs> well that was that got all that got murky for a while anyway. And they and in WWF actually had to cut a deal with Marvel to use Hulk's name in marketing. And there was like, you know, you had they needed to be sure that Hulk Hogan was never you, you couldn't call him incredible. Right. And well, he Dale, looked, Dale settled that fight already years before. <laughs> that's right. They fought in the breakout cage. It was <laughs> a, it was the last cage that Hulk ever lost. Did, right. he, did he make sure to get that win back because he he wanted creative control <laughs> over his character? Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, he had to. But they, yeah, I remember they, they came to a to to, to a, a financial agreement that okay, he can exist, uh, but you cannot market him in these ways. And Incredible right. Hulk is our thing, and that's a separate thing. Uh, right. So I so apparently I I remember LJN stopped making them around like the the late eighties and then Hasbro actually picked them up in what like nineteen ninety yeah Hasbro did pick them up and I want to say it was ninety uh, it was the same I... time that um, Galoob mm-hmm. picked up WCW yes and took the LJN model of just being the posed rubber and mm-hmm. made it smaller yes. And and, that, uh, and at the same time, right around ninety, Hasbro and Galoob made the made that change. There was a lot of there was a lot of wild stuff going on in wrestling in the in the nineties. Anyway, like once once we got past the 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 kind of the cartoony era, and they they were like, well, ECW is doing this. Let's let's do this instead. And then we got into the the Monday Night Wars and Nitro and versus Raw. Right, and that's when I kind of tuned out. Yeah, really. So that so the the Monday Night Wars lost you. That pulled yeah. Me once back it in. got into like the mid nineties, mm-hmm. like into the nineties and that, that's huh. when I started tuning out. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Now, yeah, was um, was it be now? Why why was that? Was it because you didn't like them pulling the curtain back a little bit, or was it? I it just seemed. Um, I I don't know. I think I liked the weird, like mm-hmm. cartoony. You know what I mean. Yeah. And, and then it it started to go into like you know into like the Attitude Era and those yeah. kind of things. And like I I, I didn't. I, I just, See, just wasn't for me. It became See, too I, soap opera. Yeah, I think well, once <laughs> once they decided that like the, the they were like, well, we need as many scantily clad women as possible. Was around right. the time that I stopped being able to watch wrestling. With and around my parents, because I couldn't have mom walk in and watch watch like the the recap of Sable unveiling that her bikini is just handprints on her boobs. Right. Uh, like you, that was everybody. Just, everybody wants no, I, their mom chanting, "Show me the puppies." <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So that so that was uh, that was yeah that was kind of a change. Like I still watched as much as I could when they weren't when they were not around. But uh, I, I, on I the think action I, figure side, I. Well, I want to say actually, them. when you said why, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but like oh, no, it moved from being entertainment for kids, and they realized mm-hmm. that the people who loved that had grown up, yeah, and they started making it for those grown ups yeah. as opposed to the kids, and I think yeah. that change was where they lost me. Because mm-hmm. I, like, I don't know what that says about me. No, I mean it's it's a, it's definitely like a, if you're used to a specific way that it was presented. Uh, and and there was a period of time where it, there was like an adjustment period where, uh, say like the, the, the I'll use Jake the Snake when Jake the Snake came in he was not like a funny gimmick it was like he no. had the snake the snake was a gimmick but it wasn't like it goofy. was it was uh, no it wasn't goofy it was terrifying yeah and then like at, they 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 built off of that but almost in like the wrong direction and like well well everyone gets an animal now we'll bring in coco beware and we'll get the british bulldogs <laughs> a dog from and there's hilarious stories about that like apparently they 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 couldn't stand this dog and the dog could not stand him either and <laughs> they just kind of gave it to them as a rip uh right. but yeah like everything kind of became and they tried to eat frankie gimmicky. yeah they tried to eat frankie and then this unfortunately Jake the snakes snake damien became like a little bit, a little bit too gimmicky, and then they, and then Earthquake yep. killed him, and it became like a big thing. Uh, yeah. But as far I, I always, as far as action figures go, I never, I always liked watching Jake the Snake, and I liked his interaction with the Undertaker. But I never wanted an Undertaker toy. And I used to ask myself, what would make you want these? And I would be like, right. all right, well, 
self, <laughs> I would right. be interested if they push like the superhero aspect of these, but or like push the comic aspect of these, but in a right. toy way. And then they did that, like in the you mean like this. <laughs> yeah, let's let's do that. If only they chose someone else. If it was like the Jake the Snake miniseries, and they oh, oh yeah, that would be good. Look how they did do an Undertaker series. Was it? Oh, I forgot the name of the comic company that did it. Was it Malibu? I don't remember. It was it was a smaller, uh, a more mm -hmm. independent company. And there was an Undertaker series, but I was fascinated with. But it was still tied to wrestling. Like I, right. it, my my appreciation of wrestling and wrestling product and then toys makes no sense at all. I was like, I'd totally be into these wrestling toys if they weren't wrestling toys. Right. And then they did, and I still wouldn't get them. Hmm. Well, you know what's weird at this point? Once Hasbro and, and Galoob got involved, right? My mm -hmm. younger brother at the time, who was, you know, he's he's younger than I am, obviously. Mm -hmm. That's why I call him my younger brother. Uh, <laughs> so now it went reverse. Before, mm -hmm. like, like, all of the toys we had became wrestlers, right? Yeah. And now all of the wrestlers were becoming superheroes because okay. at, that, at that time. Yeah. And um, it was funny. And I've told you about this. My younger brother is with the way he connects universes and <laughs> toys is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And he had, so he had Dick Tracy, the Dick mm -hmm. Tracy figures, right. From playmates. And, and of course, Dick Tracy and Sam Catchum, Mm -hmm. couldn't compete with the super villains and stuff. so <laughs> in order to have a little bit of muscle in the uh police department they deputized <laughs> the wrestlers mm -hmm. and then in response big boy caprice hired the bad guy wrestlers <laughs> as his muscle at the <laughs> same awesome. time yeah <laughs> but what really gave him the edge is that dale would take jake the snake roberts mm -hmm. And take like this weird like swamp thing, you know, with the swamp thing action figures mm -hmm. came with like this, I don't know if it was like a trap or, or whatever it was. Oh it was, like, yeah. This, yeah. And it was it looked like antlers when you looked at it one way. And mm -hmm. he would put that over Jake's head. And then <laughs> Jake would chant and summon Metlar. <laughs> That is fantastic. I love it. <laughs> he, would, he would summon <laughs> Metlar and then from the Inhumanoids. And Metlar would show up. And then it's like, oh, what are we going to do now? It's Metlar, which, right? Which is something that, like, I, I think that's awesome. And that is something that I would do in the way that I played with toys. Where everything was, yeah, everything was wrestling-centric, but the wrestlers would do other things besides put people in headlocks. Uh, it was, <laughs> yeah, it was more more comic book action adventure. Uh, I, 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 like I said, I didn't have, uh, what was the first, I didn't own wrestling figures. I think the first one that I got, uh, was a gift. Well, I remember was... you telling the story about trading oh, someone yeah. for the beast, for the battle beast, right? Oh, yeah. Was so, it? So te te I guess, I guess te technically. Was it Mr. Fuji? The first... No, uh, technically the first, I guess the first wrestling figure I ever really owned for a minute was Captain Lou Albano. Captain Lou, I knew he was a manager. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got it. I got him in a uh, a grab bag. And I yeah, I got him. It was one of the LGN figures, which is probably worth a ridiculous amount of money now. But uh not that I not that I even I would even have him to sell at this point. If I kept him, he would be in a he would he would be at like the the uh the dump for years by now. But uh. I remember getting him and seeing him and being like, oh because I didn't collect wrestling figures. And I was like, what am right. I gonna do with this? And he's a manager. But I, right. I, I, I remember you school or traded him for the battle beasts. Yeah, and someone else got battle beasts, and he was like, "What are these? I don't want these." You're like, "I'll tell you what they are. They're mine. They're from now. What is?" And, and yeah, like we like made eye contact, and I was like, "You, you, you want?" <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, oh, "Is Captain Lou?" I don't know. If, I don't know. If we didn't have Captain Lou because a lot of times people would just get it, especially if you were younger and you were getting yeah, yeah, gifts yeah. and presents. You just got the wrestlers. You didn't get the managers because. Parents yeah. looking for toys for kids would be like, well, they, he wants this guy in tights. No one wants the guy wearing a Hawaiian shirt. So he didn't right. have a manager. Unless and, it's Chuckles. <laughs> that's right. Everyone wants Chuckles. Or Magnum P.I. Uh, but yeah, what, one of the best trades ever set me off on a totally separate path mm -hmm. that I do not regret. You know what I thought was genius when they came out in 85, 86? Thumb wrestlers. 
I, I remember <laughs> those. That was so cool. You'd stick your thumb up, Big John Studs butt, right? And then you would You'd actually lock your hands buddy. and thumb wrestle. And Hulk Hogan, was, they sold them in two packs. It was like the yep. Iron Sheik and Hulk Hogan. It was great. They were so funny. When I first saw them, I thought, that's brilliant. brilliant. It really was. That was whoever it was. It that and at the same the time, the, so the LJN guys were big, but uh, uh, who did the Titans, the Bendy um, Titan Sports, maybe? Like they, uh, like they were Gumby, like like or like the other world wrestlers, and they oh, were, yeah. I I kind of remember those. Well, Titan Titan Sports is is WWE yeah, like the right, yeah, name, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't I I, I don't, don't remember vaguely, who did it. I it had to be LJ. It probably had to be LJ because they were rubber yeah. and wired like Gumby. So yeah, I think I think Hasbro started Hasbro and oh, what happened after that was it. Um, Jax, Jax, I think Jax, came in the yeah, 90s. Jax did it. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. yep they, they took it in the nineties, and that's when I was they, out. I didn't have any. Of okay, because Jared I, bought a bunch of them. I remember around that time that that was when they really uh, yeah, they were pushing the gimmicks anyway. But I remember yeah. I remember Jax really pushing all kinds of weird stuff like the 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 bone crunching figures where you you bend How about their the arm. Sweaty you the wrestlers, you remember the, the maximum sw sweat, sweat wrestlers. The so, sweat. I remember. So, 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 I bought so a sweaty wrestler. What? Yeah, and I remember the commercial. Like looking back on it, just so I have gross. a couple of them out there. I should have brought them in. I had. And, and again, it was it was a another one that was a gift because I never ever purchased these for my. I have for myself. I think the the Undertaker, John mm -hmm. Cena. I got I had the Undertaker, and I love this the sculpt on those. Yeah, were they're fantastic. really good. They're so and comic booky. Yeah, and I never I never used him. Well, around that time, I I had gotten out of the the you know like the kind of crash banging them together. Uh, right. But I I I actually would hang on to him. I held on to him. I set him on a shelf. I. I actually did do the sweat gimmick every now and then because it was just, it was so hilarious. It's so funny. And I was like, you know, people are just filling this with food coloring and making them bleed. Oh, uh, yeah. Because around that time, that was around the same time that Austin had the first blood match with Kane. Oh, so if you're right. doing if you're doing a first blood match with Austin, then you get you get the maximum sweat version and you have under, you have a, a Kane cheat and he hits him with a chair and, and, uh, and he wins. But yeah, that made, mm -hmm. it made perfect sense. Uh, but yeah, I, I even though like I kept up with them and I never seen the commercials for them and I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. I mm. I still never bought them. I think yeah, it was, like it was just the Undertaker that I had for years. It wasn't until that's the best one though. Him and Kane. They're yes, the best one. my I gifted him to my nephews when they were younger and they got into wrestling. So I mm. I started buying action figures for them. Uh, and I I remember giving them the Undertaker and my brother in law. Had, I don't think he had ever seen it. He was like, they use that Undertaker. Well, like, they, and they would make them wrestle, whatever. But once they established who who was the winner and who the champion was, then the um, that version of the Undertaker was like the the main boss. The main boss, <laughs> yeah. He was monstrous. Yeah, he was huge. And again, like the sculpting on him, like he it is enough of an exaggerated uh, uh, design that it wasn't it wasn't cartoony. It was just like a little bit over the top, and, uh, a little bit more menacing. Uh, right. But I, I thoroughly enjoyed those. Now, though, now I actually have started buying some of the characters that I prefer. Um, and they're all, they're all the, the like, kind of over the top. Give me, I, I purchased Bray, the, the, the Fiend character that Bray Wyatt right, had become. Right. There were some uh, really good figures the, of him. Yeah. Now, now that we've gotten to the point, and, and this is the articulation snob in me coming out. Mm. Once Mattel got a hold of the line. And they started cranking out again. Again, they were trying to do. They, they had a bunch of different kind of gimmicky uh, things. There was a Slam City uh, series where they were the, they were kind of like minis. They were mini figures, and you had like a little mini ring that you could put them in. Uh, again, mm -hmm. I got I got some of those from my nephews, but I wasn't really into those. It wasn't until uh, they started coming out with the like the Elite series, um, where it was right. high detail. The uh, except like the no one could get Andre right. No, I don't understand why that's so difficult. Why is the Princess Bride version of him kind of the best version of Andre yeah. the Giant? I think mean, that's not great, but I it's love not, it. Not the best, uh, but it. But the 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 Elite series were what I was really interested in. Uh, I mean, no, I'm sorry, I take that back. The WWE Masters of the Universe crossovers oh, were yeah. what pulled me back in because I remember the figures coming pulled out. Me back in. 
yeah, like I I was I had no interest in getting any of the actual wrestling figures. Right. Uh, or if I did, it was like really far and few between. Uh, I may have picked up Demolition because I loved Demolition, but I again, like, oh, I yeah. want I want like an elite series version of those. I don't know if they exist or they did. They came out before I before I knew about them. Uh, but I remember getting. Yeah, it, it, again, it's all like kind of the gimmicky characters. Uh, uh, the Undertaker, Kane, like some of the versions of them that I prefer. Those right, the I ones that look up. like, uh, you know, like horror movie bad guys. Yeah, Jake, that's your the, thing. Jake the Snake. Uh, I, I need a good Jake the Snake. He's, you know, one of my favorite versions of him is the uh, the, the Master of the Universe crossover where he has the yep. King His gimmick because yep. that's that's perfect. Uh, it's it's kind of interesting because I kind of wonder if Mattel went to WWE and said, "Hey." You want us to make some wrestling figures, but like in this style? And did they, did, did Mattel trick WWE into paying for their He Man molds? I think they it did. Was WWE like, oh, that's a great idea. And they gave them all this money to make the molds. And now they just have to tweak them for the Origins right. line. Brilliant. And I still love the, the, the crossovers. Again, like the, the, the New Day Manny Faces is yeah, brilliant. That's brilliant cool. concept. Great executed figure. I couldn't find it anywhere. I still had it. Like I wanted my collection. I don't have it. So, uh, so, so circling back to uh, what we have going on currently with Mattel making making the figures, and we have Jazzwares who is in the mix making AEW figures, which is kind of interesting because I think if I, and, and again, listeners and and watchers, please correct me if I'm wrong. I think that with Mattel making the AEW action figures. Sting has become like the first person who has an action figure for WCW, WWE slash F, and AEW. I think he's he's done, he's hit the big three, which is nice. Kind of the hat trick. He's got yeah. the hat trick. Is there anybody? Is there anybody else who could possibly do that? I don't even I, think there are. I can't think of anyone else offhand because because hmm. I, I know there's I know there's crossover between WWE and WCW. So like right. uh, uh, Scott, uh, Scott Hall has figures and Razor Ramon and then there's Kevin Nash, mm-hmm. whatever, and H- Hogan, but Hogan is not allowed in the EW, which I think is awesome. Uh, so yeah, I, I think Sting may have been, <laughs> and I completely forgot there were, there were uh, if I'm remembering correctly, there were action figures for Impact. Impact Wrestling yes, had they were action figures. Horrible. Which, they which were horrible. Sting has a horrible action figure from Impact. He That's does. Four. They were all, all uh, like really overweight kind of looking. There was no yep. cut in the physique, but yes, yeah, Sting oh, does that was have unfortunate. One. The only the only thing he's missing, and uh, oh, I, I probably should have brought this up earlier. Uh, Ultimate Muscle, or yes. or even just just Muscle. Like I, I remember that. I game. was going to talk about that. The little the yeah. little guys. Yeah, Nobody was... ever used them for wrestling, though. No, they were just a little like like a fidget toy, essentially. You you you. Yeah. you I I only had those. Those were another one where I. I knew the gimmick was wrestling, and I just wasn't interested in it. They were I so had... cool, like big hands and cyclops <laughs> and aliens and robots and monsters. Like nobody and... ever used them for wrestling, but I, but I love the concept of the intergalactic wrestler. Yeah. It reminded me of that uh, episode of uh, was it uh, Dexter's Laboratory? When... Oh, M for Monkey, <laughs> yes. where he fights the wrestler, voiced by Macho, Macho Man, Man, Man. Savage. Yeah. <laughs> My, I, I love think, that episode, but that kind I, of intergalactic wrestling thing, that's what I always thought about. The my favorite part of that entire episode, is, I, the whole thing is, is just great, but my favorite part was at the end when he's talking to Monkey because he just wouldn't stop fighting, and he's <laughs> and he's doing the, you know, and, and you and me, little Monkey, and he's doing, like, he's raising his fist, and Monkey is just, like, slightly imitating him, raising his fist to him as well. <laughs> and then he was bone star in Spider-Man, too. He was. There needs to be more random Andy Savage. Why do we have a bone saw? Why don't we have a Marvel have... Legends bone saw figure? You know what? I I honestly think that it's because no, yo, no. I take it back. Hasbro was making WWF action figures at the time. At least I think they were at the time. I that think so. McGuire yeah. Spider Man came out. Yeah. There's no reason for us to not have a bone saw. Bone saw is ready. Just make <laughs> yeah, so him good. so I, good, man. Ha- have you had a chance? It's it's interesting to me to see that there's now so many uh, 
companies now that have kind of gotten on to the, the, the wrestling. I don't, I don't want to say bandwagon, but like there's more there's more acknowledgement that more than just WWF or WWE and WCW existed. Uh, I like that. I, I love Sting that had one of those galoob, out. Sting had one of those galoob wrestlers as well. Did he? He yes. is. He is all. I'm, I'm kind of amazed that he didn't make it into Ultimate Muscle because Dusty Rhodes did. Mm. There is a. I for, oh, I forgot his name in the series, but there is a figure of Dusty Rhodes, and I actually really enjoyed. And again, because it was superhero ish, Ultimate Muscle. They 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 actually imported that series over here, and it's a sequel to the original Muscle, and it's about mm. the offspring of King Muscle. And those action figures were pretty great. Uh, yeah. There was a whole line of of like fully, I think it's an articulation snob in me. There was a whole line that came mm-hmm. out overseas that are great. Uh, S, uh, SH Figure Arts came out with some of the Ultimate Muscle figures. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, I forgot the name of the company. It was like Ram, Ramden? Ramden? I, I'm, I'm blanking on their name. But mm-hmm. they had a whole series of. Uh, Figures based on the original Ultimate Muscle, and then later on, follow-ups. And I love that the story where that this was, yeah, like the second generation. The bad guys were clearly the NWO. Uh, Kevin yes. Mask had the offspring, and it was just so, so good. It was so well done. I was like, this is what I like. If you're going to take wrestling and make it superhero-y, do this. Like this is what I want. Um, which is interesting because. Mattel tried this, like they, aside from the the the, the He Man crossovers, before they hit even that, they were doing, again, like the like the Gator style Bray Wyatt, the robotic John Cena. Uh, it it was a superhero line, and I just just wasn't into it. Although I was no, it into, just wasn't well done. No, but you know what they did do a good job with, and it's, it, I guess it's. Maybe it's a kind of a catchway too, because technically he's just a wrestling figure. There was a Ghostbusters crossover, where right, it's, right. it was like The Rock, I think, like Steve Austin, Shawn Michaels, and somebody else, those, yeah. and they're chasing The Undertaker. So there's this really cool ghost version of Undertaker, right? Which, which you, of course, have. Oh, I, oh, I had to, I had to get him. Yep. He's translucent purple. He does not glow, which is unfortunate. They remedied that with the with the the, uh, the He-Man crossover. So mm-hmm. the Undertaker scare glow cross uh, uh, he glows, but that that Ghostbusters Undertaker is great. Right. I love that. Eventually, they they recognized mm-hmm. that you know wrestlers were just cartoon characters. You know what I yes. mean, and started to treat them as such. Yeah. Well, I mean, we had the rock and wrestling, uh, you know connection with Cindy Lauper and Mr. T and then their a cartoon yeah. came yeah. of that. But aside from that. And funny enough, it never really translated into toys. Like you would think, especially especially with the rock and wrestling thing like that. Right. That seemed more more like get us on MTV so we have more exposure and get us on a cartoon so we can be exposed to kids. But yeah, like there was no toy line to to associate right. with that. And I and I know if it's a rights thing, but I, I they have to be able to strike a deal with pretty much everybody. They've, we've hit the point now where they're starting to produce, uh, they have the, the figures for No Holds Barred now. So you have Hogan in like the weird commando right. gear and you have Just Zeus. Saw Zeus. Yeah. And I, I I was this close to getting him because I love I Zeus. saw, I saw that look, when I saw him, I picked up Hogan <laughs> and I was like, eventually I'm going to have to pick this up for Dale because he's a Hulk mm-hmm. maniac, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I saw Zeus behind him and I was like, I pointed at him and mm-hmm. you were like, what? Yeah, and I was like, Tom's I definitely was, gonna buy that. I was so close to getting him, but I, I can't. It, it's a, it's also like kind of a rabbit hole that I can't allow myself to get sucked right. back into. Because you're not going to be able to get a little bicycle for him to be Debo. Yeah, I, I'm going to need the ragged <laughs> jeans. I'm going to need a. I'm going to need an ice cube figure. It's just, it's not going to happen. And he I, gonna, I, he's going to cry in the car. <laughs> uh, so, I guess, uh, I, I guess, kind of bringing this, bringing this to a, uh, to a close. Who would you like to? Is there anyone that you would like to see as an action figure or like a wrestling action figure that never had one? Or is there like a specific character that you would want to see as a wrestling figure, like in a specific style or or like with with whatever specific gimmick that may or may not have have popped up yet? Yeah, I liked. Uh, I like if one. I, you know, I'm not a big fan of the pops figures. Like I like them. Mm-hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong; they're cool and mm-hmm. they're they're fun to collect and they stack perfectly. Like they're they're just perfect collectible toys, right? Mm-hmm. And any license has. But they took the Marvel guys and he made the Lucha wrestlers mm-hmm. 
like the pop ones, like Bane yeah. and those like this. So I I thought that was just a cool idea. So <laughs> taking comic book characters and giving me like a good figure, not a pop figure, but <laughs> making them like the lucha wrestlers <laughs> or doing similar to the He-Man thing, mm -hmm. doing a crossover with like DC. <laughs> like, if you, I mean, dress Lex Luthor like... Bobby the Brain Heenan, right? That would be thing, that would right? be a lot of fun. And then have that would be a lot like, of fun. I would love that. Bizarro <laughs> and somebody like Bizarro <laughs> and like I don't know, but being like Big John Stone and King Kong Bundy next to him, right? Like that would be <laughs> that would be a lot of fun, right? That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think that would be cool. In regards to to wrestlers, like I always liked the ones that were a little more cartoony. Like before, mm -hmm. I realized he was a jerk. Like the Ultimate Warrior was one of my favorites because mm -hmm. of his, you know, superhero <laughs> thing he had going on. Right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know he was a roided up jerk, but that's that's besides. Yeah, most of them were. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, you're not a jerk, but you're pretty well roided up, right, Tom? <laughs> Every day, all day. <laughs> it, it always amazed me to find out, like, you would hear about some guys getting hit for steroids, or whatever, and you'd be like, yeah. really? That guy doesn't, cause, like, some of the people that weren't roided up or, like, or weren't, like, super ballooned up right. you know, monsters were still on roids. And I'm like, really? How? Right. I'm not you're, seeing it. I'm not, you're doing them wrong. You're doing steroids right, you're like, wrong. How what? do you manage that? Mike Rotundo? <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, uh... I just. How are you? How is that possible? But then, like, Brutus Beefcake <laughs> left the dream team, vanished for three months, and came back, like, just, with just another ready. 60 pounds of muscle on him, right? Ready to explode. Um, yeah, but I, I would love to see that kind of, of, of crossover. Or, like, classic wrestler guys mm -hmm. done up, like, the Lucha style with the, the little cape and the mask. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. remember when Andre the Giant and Hogan came back and they were supposed to be Japanese wrestlers? Oh, like, yeah, the machines. The I'm, machines. I'm, I'm kind of amazed we haven't gotten the machines. It's just, you literally just need to make a new head sculpt that had the mask. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that was their entire outfit, which I loved. I yeah. loved that it. it was just blatantly Andre the Giant. And they're like, machine right, number like, three, who else? Down. Who oh, else? Big man. Do? This guy's <laughs> seven and a half feet tall and weighs 500 pounds and can't stand up straight. I wonder if that's Andre. I'd love Listen. to see machine number three take on Andre the Giant one day. What a big, what a clash that would be. <laughs> Two big dudes just duking it out. What about you? What is your, uh, your dream wrestler? R-A-S-S-L-I-N. I, I, I'm going to immediately break my own rules and pick two. So there you are... You do that every time. You ask me a question, you give me specific <laughs> guidelines, and then when it comes to you, you make and, up new guidelines. Answer within these parameters. Do as, wow. I, do as I say. Not as I do. <laughs> my pick is... I and I I don't know I don't know if you were still you may not have been watching when she was around. There was a a a lady wrestler named Victoria, or that was her that was her name in W. It was she she appeared before the they changed the name. I believe she was in WWF. She got her she she appeared as what? Do you remember the Godfather? Yes. She got her start. You would come out with 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 the whole train. Uh, she got her start as one That's of the so women funny. in that. Yeah, they, looking, looking back at it they now, got away with, yeah. man, they're all. Oh, if, if you ever get an opportunity, listen to some of the, the shoot interviews with the Godfather, who's a who just sounds like an awesome dude, and he talks about all the things that they were able to get away with because corporate was just a bunch of out of touch, old wrinkled dudes, and right. they're like. What if we we're gonna go out there and talk about spliffs and blunts and fatties? And they're like, right. okay, we'll go insult those fat people. And they're right. like, yeah, the, yeah, that's the, what we're doing. Boy, Lesslers, <laughs> let's let's just let the record show that Tom's definition of a cool dude has a hoe trait. <laughs> Something to aspire to, kids. Uh, so <laughs> she appeared. The kids would have a hoe choo choo. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, go get a go get like. A pack of ho hos, and that's that's what it is. So <laughs> she got her Victoria got her start as a member of that, and then she split off and she became it's a auspicious. phenomenal wrestler. Well, yeah, she well she came in around this time where uh, women wrestling was going from because there was that time that there was that run in the eighties where women wrestlers were women wrestlers. They were also managers, right. but they were you know specifically wrestlers, and then they kind of scaled back and they were just like they were just managing, and we went through. We went through the the, the attitude the, the kind of the attitude era, and it was 
you know, just lots of skin and whatever. And then it, it, from, from what I have heard from numerous interviews is that they gave, there, there's a wrestler named Fit Finley, who is also awesome. He is this, <laughs> like this gritty Irishman and he used to wrestle in WCW and he had all these amazing matches with William Regal. And then he came to WWF and they, as a joke, were like, you're going to train the women. Ha ha ha. And he said, okay, I'm going to train the women. And he trained Trish Stratus. He trained Victoria. He trained Molly Holly. He, he, he didn't trained... train them, right? No, <laughs> he, he, he trained them to wrestle. Oh, and okay. they went out and they, they revolutionized the women's division. They went out awesome. and had ridiculous matches. It's so it's it's one of the best periods of with women wrestling just hmm. ever. Like we're we're getting back to it. We're like now women wrestling is like just full on women wrestling. It's more the, the, the more day, popular than the guys. Yeah. The day of brawn panties matches and, and mud bowl gravy matches, which which you know to her credit, Trish Stratus and Victoria and that like the, a lot of them, they were they had to go through that, but they were still having crazy good matches. Uh hmm. Victoria was part of that, and I loved her. And I say that as someone who thinks that the term "love" is has been has become overused and, and a trite expression. I loved Victoria; wow. she was amazing, and she had a great finisher. She had a good look and uh, cut a great promo. And I don't know what happened between her and WWF for whatever reason. She's not in the Hall of Fame, which is disgraceful, and. She has not had an action figure in hmm. years, and she deserves an action figure. Uh, my my second pick, uh, her name was Daphne. She appeared, or the first time I saw her was in WCW. She was paired with Ric Flair's son, weirdly enough, hmm. uh, David Flair. And his gimmick became, like, I think they had tried a bunch of things with with him, and it just was not working. And then they were like, well, your gimmick is that you're crazy. So he would come out and he dyed his that hair works. blonde and he would let, and it just like, it just wasn't getting over. And then he appeared with one day, this awesome looking character named Daphne. And she would come out and she would scream at the top of her lungs and she could wrestle. And it was awesome. She was oh, kind of like Harley Quinn before she was, before say, Harley Quinn she was like was a around. Harley Quinn thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Very much that. And she, and she was great. And she, I, I remember going to a, a live event for WWE when I was still in, when I lived in Philadelphia and she came out for a dark match. It always bothered me that she never had got a run in WWE, uh, but she had a dark match on that night. And I lost my mind because she was wrestling and Victoria also had a match on that card. And I was like, if only they could figure out a way to get her in here and do a program with Victoria, that would be great. And it never happened until <laughs> Victoria left WWE and went to Impact Wrestling and then she changed her name to Tara and Daphne, because WCW had gone under and she wasn't picked up, uh, she was over there as well. And they finally had their uh, their rivalry and it was awesome. Nice. Tom wished I, it to happen and it did. It finally happened and it was entertaining and it was great. And those two deserve action figures. Daphne, unfortunately, took her life. She had, she had oh. problems. She had... Uh, she had a lot well, going on. Life imitates wasn't... art. It's always sad. So it, it was that's unfortunate. But uh, I would still love to get an action figure, an accurate looking action figure of her. And Victoria more than deserves an action figure. So that's that's my were I to be in charge and creating action figures, they could absolutely make this happen. They just need to do it. I want those two as action figures. Tom has spoken. Do it, WWE. Who doesn't has care what I think. <laughs> the ultimate warrior. He's the worst. I Why take did it he back. always perpetrate that English thing he had going on? I have no clue. He wasn't right in the head. <laughs> no, he wasn't. <laughs> so, so on on a higher note, uh, this has been fun. Wrestling is wrestling is fun when 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 you when you uh, uh pay attention to the the better when aspects you, of uh, it. Say your prayers and take your vitamins. No, because he never did that. <laughs> <laughs> He's a terrible liar. He took He's vitamins. He took vitamins. <laughs> they quote, were very <laughs> vitamins. I think it's pronounced vitamins. <laughs> vitamins. Yes. <laughs> Take all your vitamins. 
It was a wink. Don't worry, we'll be fine. Took my vitamins. All right, Tom, thanks for joining us. Wait a minute. Did we do it again? Oh, no, we may have done this again. Thanks for joining me in another episode of Two Guys (laughs) Talking Toys. We were so jazzed about wrestling, we didn't even think about it. Also, make an action figure of Jazz, please. She was great. Uh, right. So, if you let us know if you are in charge of Hasbro or Mattel or uh, Jazz Wares or or Boss Fight Studios, who was also making Legends of Lucha, which is also a really great line. Uh, let us know. Our our Twitter handle is Two Guys Talking Toys. That is the number two, no G after the talking. Uh, get a hold of us on Gmail. That is Two Guys Talking Toys. The number two, no G after the talking. I think it might be time to maybe expand into the realm of uh, Blue Sky. And I have been attempting to get us an Instagram page, uh, maybe expanding the socials a little bit so that we we have more of a presence, a little bit more of a digital footprint. Uh, All right. But but I'll I'll get to work on that. In the meantime, uh, please leave us a like, uh, subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the episodes. Uh, Listeners on Spotify and any place else that you may be listening to it, Rate us, give us a review, and all, all that helps feed the algorithm, the, the almighty algorithm. He said, "Rate, not raid." Don't yeah, don't, raid us. don't raid us, please. Was there <laughs> ever a Hercules Hernandez figure? I don't think there was. All right, well, make it happen before next episode. Yeah, put it put on a two pack with him and Iron Mike Sharp, please. Yes, <laughs> make it happen. He was like Bizarro Night Rider. Anyway. I'm... <laughs> he really was. All right. Bye, so, everybody. Take care, everyone. <laughs>